about when things go wrong with CPAP. And what I mean by that is uh, there's some national statistics that state that only about 60% of the patients that receive a CPAP uh, continue to use it for more than a month or two. There's different reasons for that. And that some of the most common ones, though, is that the patient is just uncomfortable with it and or there's something that is making them uncomfortable. And I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the most common things and how you may be able to fix them. Uh, first of all, the mask is usually the, the number one problem. It, it's just not normal to, to wear uh, a mask on your face when you're trying to sleep. I hear every week that people will use the, the mask for three or four hours to begin with and then they take it off or they find it off in the bed. Uh, some of the most common reasons is the headgear is too tight. And if your mask is, if the headpiece is too tight, that the headgear is what holds the mask on, uh, there's, it's probably not fitted well. Now, the higher your pressure is, the tighter the mask usually has to be. So if you're above 10, you're probably going to have to snug it up a little more. Men that have facial hair, uh, you're going to have to tighten around there. There are masks, however, uh, like this is an Activa made by ResMed, that is designed that you only tighten the forehead assembly across uh, the, your forehead just to keep the mask in place. And this particular mask moves. That's why they call it an Activa. It's, uh, it's an active mask. What this does is allow when the machine comes on, the mask will move to the to your face. Uh, this mask is not designed to, to be tightened at all. If you have to tighten it, then it's just not the mask for you. Uh, the other thing uh, as far as being too tight, you may have the wrong size mask. Uh, this is a large, a large in ResMed may not be a large in a different brand like a Respironix or Fisher & Paykel. Uh, some other things is um, people wake up and they find that they've taken the mask off. And um, I do encourage you that if you wake up and you have to go to the restroom, when you come back, a lot of times people say, I just am sleepy, I don't want to fool with having to put the, the headgear back on. Uh, I really encourage you to do that. If After a while, if you get used to the mask and you wake up and you feel the benefit of CPAP, therapy, then you, there's a really good chance that you won't even be waking up anymore to take those bathroom breaks. It's not at all uncommon. Um, another thing is nasal congestion or irritation. And one of the biggest things that uh, are one of the most revolutionary things that's happened in the last five years is they started adding heated humidifiers to CPAPs. Uh, in the beginning, they didn't use the humidifier at all. And now, then they started putting what was called a cool Passover humidifier, where you just put water in the tank. This is your humidifier chamber here. And this can serve as a cool Passover if you don't turn the heat on. So if you're having nasal congestion or dryness or a sore throat, or when you blow your nose, you, you have some bloody remnants, then uh, I would suggest you talk to your doctor about maybe using uh, a heated humidifier. The purpose of the, the heat is that the higher the air temperature, the higher the, the moisture content is going to be. This particular model goes from zero all the way up to six. Uh, most people find enough benefit just using it at one or two. That's going to increase the temperature enough to throw a lot of increase the relative humidity in the tubing. Uh, if you get on around toward five or six, chances are you're going to get condensation in the line and you may even get splashed because the water will accumulate and you may pull it over on you. Uh, another thing is about the nasal congest congestion is um, you, that you may have allergies or difficulty breathing through your nose. Uh, in this case, I can't recommend medicines or nasal sprays to you, although we do have a nasal gel spray and this is for people that have the dryness and which is going to result in some inflammation and cause some swelling. That may be something that, that you can benefit from. But as far as using uh, nasal steroids, uh, I'd recommend you see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. 
or your general practitioner may recommend something or prescribe something that you could get to help with that. Uh, the other thing is some people just, they may have a deviated septum or the bone in their nose to where they don't have good airflow. There's just not a good open passage. So in that case, you would want to use a full face mask or a mask that covers both your nose and your mouth. Um, in, in that case, when it's covering your mouth, it doesn't, you don't have to breathe through your nose. You're going to get airflow. Uh, to, it's going to inflate and create that air splint no matter if you're uh, breathing through your nose or your mouth. Uh, another common thing is headaches or ear pressure. Now, CPAPs often eliminate headaches altogether because uh, headaches, especially morning headaches, are sometimes caused from patients' oxygen level dropping during the night because your air flow stopped and you quit breathing. Once you uh, create that air splint, you're breathing again, the headaches may go away. Uh, that's a real common thing that happens uh, with CPAP therapy. Um, if you have ear pressure, uh, you probably do need to see your doctor. Uh, sometimes they recommend that you don't use it until that clears. You might have to lower your pressure, and that's something that's done with prescription only. Uh, there are features on these machines. Uh, this particular model has something called expiratory pressure relief. So when you exhale, you're not, it's not holding that fixed pressure. The pressure actually drops through the exhalation phase. Uh, they do make machines called BiPAPs and, and auto CPAPs where you can benefit from CPAP therapy but using them at a lower pressure. But the goal there to uh, eliminate the ear pressure is to re reduce the uh, peak pressure that you, that you typically use. Another thing is uh, I hear occasionally people get air in their stomach. And uh, this in the, the front of your neck is the trachea, that's the airway. And it has real firm cartilage that keeps your airway open. In the back of it is, uh, behind it is the esophagus, which goes to your stomach. It, patients, that, especially patients that are on high pressures, often will inflate the esophagus and get air down in their stomach. They'll have a lot of gas or belching. Uh, again, the only remedy for that is to try to, to lower the pressure with an automatic CPAP or a BiPAP, um, or to add the uh, expiratory pressure relief. Uh, you could also talk to your physician about that, but the um, repositioning your neck, it, you may be actually kinking your trachea like you would um, a water hose. Or, so you may want to reposition or try to find another way to lay your, your neck, and, and that may help. Uh, sometimes people don't want to continue using them because they think they're too noisy. Uh, the newer models are very, very quiet. And this one's not plugged up, but it would sound about like that if it were running. And um, the only other thing that you can do if you already own a CPAP, your insurance company may replace it. Uh, they typically do after five years if there's something that's going wrong with it or it doesn't meet your medical necessity. But we do have 10-foot hoses. Most hoses are six feet long. Uh, that's standard. So the farther away you get the machine from you, uh, the, the quieter it would be. So hopefully some of those tips um, may help if you're experiencing any of those problems. And uh, if you have any questions about it, you can give me a call here at Protect Medical. I'd be glad to uh, get you in. We'll see if we can identify what the problem is and find a remedy.